and they are in listen only mode. Hi everybody and welcome to the A to J Author online intake series. This is Dina Nikotaitis with the Center for Access to Justice and Technology. Before we begin today, I want to let you know that you are all on mute. You can raise your hands as we go and we'll unmute you if you have questions. Um, or you can put your questions in the question box. Um, if you have, if you are listening to us today and you don't have um, uh, microphone to speak to us, then you can also put your questions in the question box. We'll try to get to those as we go along. Today's topic is going to be all things technical. So hopefully if you have um, if you have a technical staff person that will be working on your online intake project or your proposed online intake project, this would be a great time to include them. So if you need to run down the hall and grab them to join the call, that would be great. But we're going to talk about the transforms and where to host your online intake interview. And we have John Mayer, who is the um, Executive Director of Cali, and he will be doing the presentation today because he is way more technically savvy than I am, and he's actually worked on these pieces. Um, one thing I do want to point out, let me go ahead and show my screen here. Um, we This is now part four of our online intake series. So this is the A to J Author community website. If you are just joining us for the first time, we have been um, posting all of the online intake materials on our website on the online intake page. So this is the main A to J author page where you can sign up, you can see upcoming um, announcements or upcoming events and trainings and things like that. So if you're interested in some of our other trainings, you can sign up here. But from the menu, you can see we have an online intake page. This page, we have posted the recordings and the slides for each of the previous three trainings. So if you've missed one, don't worry. Very easy to download. Go back and watch everything that we've already presented. You can also see here um, we have some other information to help you get started. There's a PDF guide um, just kind of going through the steps that actually was prepared by Cynthia Vaughn um, out of Ohio, and they've done a couple of these projects. And then we also have some examples of online intake scripts as well as actual A to J online intake interviews. So all of this information is here for you to use when you need it. Um, and so I'm actually going to go ahead and pass everything over to John today. Like he said, he's going to run the show for me. So let me make John presenter. So John, you should have controls now. Am I... Live? You are live. <laughs> Hello, everybody. And where am I? Resuming my slideshow. I'm still uh, rushing to get caught up here. You sound um, a little far away. All right. Does that sound a little bit better? Sure. All right. Um, I'm on my speakerphone in my office. Um, but if I hold the phone, then I get a, a slightly better uh, voice, I guess. Um, so I'll have to like cradle in my ear. I have a stick in my neck, I bet, at the end of this. All right, so A to J on your own server. Easier than you think. And I put that question mark there because um, it is easier than you think. But, um, but anytime you, you, you dig into the sort of the deep technology stuff, it, it, it can get very confusing if you're not familiar with it. And even when you're familiar with it, it, it it's, it's potentially confusing because doing stuff on a server isn't hard. You know, it's not rocket science, but it does involve sort of keeping track of where a whole bunch of different files are and how they point to each other. And, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a really quick sort of like meta overview, a big picture overview, and then I'm going to um, dive right in and, and show you how to set up a server. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually set one up almost from scratch on my own computer right here in front of you. I've already pre-set one up in case I screw something up and need to, you know, bail out. Um, but, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, all right, let's get started. So I hate that whenever there's a presentation, you can't see who the person is. So, um, so here's a picture of me. Oh, oh wait, that was a picture of me this morning. I've uh, since cleaned up. Um, there's a picture of me. 
Um, and I'm a pleasant guy and I'm kind of happy to be doing this. And uh, let's get started. So here's your typical A to J interview on Law Help Interactive, right? So a website user comes along and they uh, load up their browser and they go to some statewide website. Um, they find uh, a link to a form, you know, that they want to fill out, uh, criminal expungement or, uh, or something like that. And at that point, they follow that link and it goes to Law Help Interactive, right? So now they're dealing directly with Law Help Interactive. Law Help Interactive links them to the A to J form because there's a, there's a page there that has a link to A to J that knows which interview the person was picking and the, the name of the file of that interview is contained inside a JavaScript variable that's inside that HTML page, right? It's, it's, it's a uh, container page is what we might call it. Now, the other things that, that Law Help Interactive have on their server is uh, A to J related files, such as the viewer file, the avatar images, uh, configuration things, and stuff like that. So those are all things that you will need on your own server if you want to run an A to J interview on your own server. The other thing that Law Help Interactive has is some sort of destination web page that sits there, uh, or service, that sits there waiting to catch the data. Right? The user goes through the interview, hits submit, and data is now being sent from their browser to Law Help Interactive. Something's got to catch it and then do something with it. In the case of filling out a form, it takes that data. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. In the case of filling out a form, it, it catches the data, hands it off to an associated Hot Docs template, which then Hot Docs does the work of, of creating the document, the PDF or the RTF or however, however it is that the author created that template, and sending it back through Law Help Interactive to the user, either inside their browser window or if it's been set up as an email um, delivery or some other way, right? So is that perfectly clear? In a room, I would get, I would, I would also have like a sound of crickets, I guess, at this point. Um, but that's the big picture overview that that your you you find the you find a form somewhere, you link to it. You 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 find the form link, I should say. It links to Law Help Interactive, which has the A to J related files. It has a container page that says, you know, this is the. Uh, this is the interview that the person wants to run, and it has a uh, destination page or that, that catches the data or some kind of service. So we're going we're gonna to do the same thing now as though we were doing it on our own server. So here's your website, and instead of having hot docs there, um, when it grabs the data or catches the data coming back, um, one of the most typical things you're going to want to do is, is hand it off to an XSLT uh, file, which is to say an XML style language transform, which will basically take the data that's coming out of A to J, which is in hot docs format, .anx format, which is an XML format. There are more three-letter acronyms than you can shake a stick at in this, aren't there? Which takes that XML data coming from A to J and converts it into something else, right? Your content management system or whatever it is that you want to do with that data probably doesn't out of the box understand the data format that Hot Docs understands. And so you want to convert that data into something else. I'll try to show you a couple of different examples of that. One that converts it into a comma separated uh, value file, a CSV. Another one that shows you a conversion into a different XML format. Um, and so on. And theoretically, that would then be imported. You know, now that you've converted into something that your CMS can understand, it would be imported into your CMS or converted either through some feature or tool that your CMS already has, um, or or through something that was uh, written for you or that you wrote for yourself using some kind of web-based or web uh, server script something in PHP or Perl or ASP or Java or JavaScript for that matter. All right. So here's my test server. First thing I do is I go to, and I'm not going to do this part right now because it takes a little bit too long. I go to a website called apachefriends.org and I download a package called XAMPP. 
Z-A-M-P-P. -P. All right, you may all be familiar with LAMP, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and either PHP or Perl. Well, XAMPP is sort of the Windows version of that because I'm not running Linux on my laptop right now. Okay? And I need Apache because I need a web server. I don't need MySQL for right now, but I, it comes along for the ride. And I do need PHP, which is, a, uh, which is the scripting language that I'm going to use and that we use uh, for this demonstration, for these demonstration purposes. PHP is probably the, one of the most widely used web scripting languages out there. Um, you know, it's the equivalent on web systems, on web servers of ASP or of Java or of Perl. Um, it's pretty easy to learn, super duper extensible. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of people out there that know how to, uh, how to use it. It will work on uh, Linux or Windows uh, or BSD or almost any, um, any operating system web server system. All right. Actually, let's uh, jump over to Apache Friends. Yeah, here I'll show you what it looks like real quick. I assume you can see that. And here's the description of, of XAMPP. It, they provide a, a complete download um, and install um, an, an enormous amount of um, help for newbies, which is awesome because uh, usually the type of people that are coming here, you know, uh, to install their own local servers, are are in learning mode. You know, they're they're trying to learn how this all sort of works together. So here's a XAMPP for Windows, and you can see that they, uh, besides the, the Apache MySQL PHP, they include some uh, admin tools, uh, an FTP server, and Tomcat, which is a an application server. Um, the interesting one there might be the FTP server because I have I've dealt with some programs where when the uh, user fills out the online intake, it, they, they generate a file that sits on the server and then they need to go to the server and go get it. And so they, they need to run a little FTP service, a file transfer protocol service, in order to pull that file off and bring it down to their um, content management system which is not on the internet, right? Not all content management systems sit on the internet or are accessible via the internet. And so somebody's got to move the data from the web-based internet-facing server to the non-web-based uh, file server where the content management system is so that the content management system can import the data, all right? Back to my PowerPoint, if I can find it. Slideshow, yes. All right, the other thing you're going to need um, is uh, Simple XML. Simple XML is a library of tools written for PHP. I think I can uh, show you what that looks like up on the screen, yes. So here's Simple XML. And what, what it does is PHP out of the box doesn't talk XML. And there's some things we want to do. We want to run a transform against the XML file that we're getting out of A to J. Um, and so I need uh, PHP's XML library to do that. And there's, uh, it's free to download. You can, uh, when, once you install it, it, it then is be available to you from within the uh, PHP programming language. And I'll show you what I mean by that when we get there. All right. The other thing that I found uh, extremely helpful for doing this work is, is I, when I'm writing an XSL transform, um, I don't want to have to you know, fire up the whole server or, or use a whole server setup to do this. I just want uh, I, I to like locally test it to see how it works. And there are XSL transform engines built into most browsers. Firefox and IE, for example, here. Um, the problem is the engines out of the box will run a transform, but they won't show you what the results look like. They'll, they'll, or they'll, or they'll show you the results, but, but it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't let you view the output that comes from it. And so there's a couple of add-ons. One of them is. Um, 
And I think I've already got these keyed up. The one I use the most is the Firefox one. Actually, I've got it. Fire, I've got it keyed up here. No, I don't have it keyed up there. I'm running so many different browsers here, I can never remember where I've got things. Here it is. So this is the uh, Firefox add-on called XSL Results. And as you can see, what it does is it displays the results of an XSL 1 or 2 transform, including on currently loaded page. That's the key thing on a one-shot or a grease monkey-like per site basis. Um, the, the value here is, is I can, take, I can take like a sample XML file, ANX output from an A to J uh, guided interview, and then I can open it up in my browser, and then I can run the XSL transform against it using this tool right inside the browser and see if it works. So, so typically when I'm writing an XSL transform, you know, I'll start by writing like the smallest possible one, which is, which is a transform that will only take one data element out and display it. And once I'm sure that's working, that means I've got my sort of Chrome working. Here, why don't I open up one of my XSL transforms? Here's Iowa Intake One, and um, and and at this point, I, I I made a realization last night when I was going over this that it's really hard for you to see my screen at this size. And I found this uh, neat tool that's built into Windows Seven called the Magnifier, in which I can um, oops, there we go which doesn't work inside of GoToWebinar. How interesting. I had this working last night. What it does is it, it blows up portions of your screen. And I thought it might be really, oh, there we go. I thought it might be really useful to show how, uh, you know, to show you parts of the screen that you can't see very well because uh, I know that when you're on the um, screen side of GoToWebinar, it makes things actually smaller than they they are even on my screen. And it looks like the audio, the video driver for GoToWebinar uh, fights against the magnifier function. So okay, so I can't do that. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's pull this up at least. Nope, none of those are working. All right. So anyhow, so here's what an XSLT uh, file looks like. What I was doing was talking about how you might do this inside a browser. And what XSLT basically does is it, is it runs X queries, which basically are like little, little searches against your XML. It says, you know, find an element, find an element, find an element. And then it says, well, what do you want to do with this element? And in this case, here's the, here's the, um, Let's find one here. So here's an X query, which is uh, which is to say select answer name equals user first name. All that all that is doing is saying inside that XML file that's coming from A to J, find the element that has as an attribute user first name T E. Right? And then pull that out and stick it into this variable, because in this case I'm creating a variable called user first name. All right? And the reason why I'm doing this is, is down here I'm generating another XML file, and this line basically says create an element called first name, and in that element put the value of what you got before, user first name, and then close that element. And, and as you can see from XSLT, it, it's a whole bunch of little go find a variables and then output them as a slightly different XML variable. All right. Let me see if I can uh, show you um, sort of the before and after of that to be short. I think that'll do it for me. Yeah, this is a little hard to read, so maybe I can um, do it. Maybe I can show it to you in. Um, yeah, pull that up a little bit. So this is the XML file that's coming out of A to J, right? And as you can see, it uses a, it has an XML element answer set, and then all of the variables that come out of A to J. This is the way Hotdocs does it. 
um, are stuck into an element called answer. And the way it differentiates between the different answers, here's answer, 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 is uh, it uses an attribute. And so this answer is of user at, is of attribute user gender. This attribute is user first name TE. This attribute is deadline TF. So, so here's the XML coming from A to J. Here's the XS, uh, XSLT file that's going to search for those attributes and then convert them into something else, which I'm going to open up in just a second. Uh, short results XML. I think that's the right one. No, that's the results file. Maybe I should do this live. I'm better when I do, when I do it live. Yeah, I'm going to do it live. So, all right. So let me finish my uh, my my overview. So here's the XSL results. Oh yeah, I was on the I was on the browser and got. Yeah, see now my uh, thing's working up there, and now it's actually grabbed my mouse. So why did it do that? I'm going to kill the magnifier because that's not doing it for me. And there we go. Okay, so this is this is my output from A to J, and what I want to do is run my XSLT against it inside the browser. Remember, I'm I'm talking about my my testing environment. All right, once I've installed the XSL add-ons, sorry, XSL results add-on for Firefox, when I right-click after I've opened the ANX file, I get a new uh, menu item down here called XSL. And at the bottom, it's got a choice called Get XSL Results. I wonder if I can do that higher so you can see that. Yeah. There, Get XSL Results. When I choose that, it opens up a window that lets me, that, that for all practical purposes, you can ignore everything except for the fact that I get to run an XSLT processor against the file that is currently in memory, which is this uh, A to J thing. So there's the A to J answer file. I'm going to go look for my XSLT file that I want to run this against. I thought I had this queued up. Take and and then I click on the transform button, and this is the results of the transform. So here's the XML from A to J. Here's the XML after it's been run through the transform. This is a little bit hard to read, so what I do is, I'll, for your sake, I'll uh, control A, control C. I'm going to open up a notepad to stick it in there. And then I'm going to save it as. A uh, here, let's stick it on. Uh, I'm just going to call it um, uh, sample uh, XSL, and I'm going to save it as an XML file. It is an XML file, but but there's but there's a reason for that. Oh, I can't save something into my own C drive. Windows Seven gets gets frustrating sometimes, you know. Okay, I'll put it into my documents. Now, because I've saved it as an XML file, I can use a browser, and it will do this nice formatting for me with this uh, purple and stuff like that. So I can say open file, C colon, users, John Mayer, documents, just looking for the XML ones. There it is, sample XML. And there it is. So there's the output from the XSL transform that I just did on um, on this A to J answer file. And this was done inside this browser using that XSL results tool. 
so that I can test and, and uh, play around with my XSL transform without actually having to do the whole thing up on the server. All right? Back to my tools. That's what happens when you hit IO5, right? So here's my tools. There also is a similar tool for Internet Explorer, um, which has that URL. But you could just search for validating XML or viewing XSLT, and it will uh, show up in, um, uh, on the Microsoft website. Um, I found it clunkier to use for my purposes, and so I recommend the XSL results add-on for uh, Firefox. All right. I use Dreamweaver as my text editor, and as you've seen already, Notepad. And of course, I use the A to J author website in order to get the A to J viewer files so that I can install them on my own web server. All right, the safety is off. We're going to try to do a live demo of this where I actually download and install all the things I just talked about. Now, I've already downloaded and installed XAMPP. And I'll show you what it looks like on my, um, on my uh, file system, on my C drive. So it creates, a, you know, so I've created a, a subdirectory called XAMPP. And underneath it, the most important folder there is htdocs. All right? Everything under htdocs is, is available, essentially, to the web. This is where your this is where you put your websites when you're creating a uh, a XAMPP web server. I've got a whole bunch of different sample websites here for different projects that I've done, including my A to J. That's my that's my bailout in case I screw up one. And I created another one this morning called Online Intake that I was just sort of playing around with. And uh, I'm going to create a new one for this purposes for this dem uh, live fire demo. We're going to call this. Uh, a to J, and we'll just call it A to J online, just to distinguish it a little bit. All right, so I've got a folder under XAMPP HT docs called A to J online. I now want to go get the A to J uh, server files from the A to J author.org website. I think that's right here. Yep. So I'm at the. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go to the home page. So I'm at the home page. I'm not even logged in, and I want to find this fast. Um, and so if you just type XSLT into the search box, you'll quickly find the, the articles that I've written about this. And there's the one, setting up A to J author on your own server and processing XML output for alternative use. Yeah. Now this, I wrote this, geez, how long ago? Four years ago. It, it definitely needs to be updated. and. As I was going through this, I was realizing yeah, I could definitely do some um, um, some some refinement on this, but it holds up pretty well for explaining essentially uh, everything that I'm doing today. And I'm going to come back and refer to this a couple of times just to show that that's true. Okay, because I, I have some little graphics and I point to everything and I show you all the files that you get and what those files a little bit of an explanation of what those files do. Um, when you install them on your server, right? And I've got a sample DTD for uh, hot docs and X at the bottom. And da, 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 find out more here. All right. So the download package described below can be obtained here. I should blow this up a little bit, right? There's my download package. A to J to lsxml.zip. That's because the the XSL file in here takes the A to J output and turns it into LS XML, uh, Legal Services XML, which at one point we, we had hoped would be sort of a, uh, a Rosetta Stone of XML. You know, if everything, if you could get something into LS XML, then hopefully it could be a, a universal converter into other things. You know, if every CMS supported importing of LS XML, then if every other data flow output to an XML format, um, that would be nice. Um, unfortunately, that's a bit of a pipe dream, and it's more complicated than that, and that's fine. So I click on that. It wants me to save it. I've already done this a couple of times. That's why it's putting that little two in there. You wouldn't see that if you were just doing it for the first time. I click save, and when I open it up, 
this is uh, opening up the zip file. It shows it there. But I don't want to open up the zip file, actually. What I want to do is uh, go to the um, is go to my downloads directory, which is under users John Mayer downloads and there it is a to j author two. And what I want to do is uh, explode that zip file into the web space of my web server. If you remember, I created a new directory under ZAMP slash htdocs. So I'm going to say to this, right click, extract all. And I'm going to browse over to my computer, my C drive, my ZAMP directory, my htdocs and A2J online, because that's where I want to stick the A2J server files for this. And I hit extract. And boom, it's that fast. So now when I uh, close that, now when I go over to my um, A2J online folder, I've got an A2J folder underneath that. I've got a server folder under that. And I've got a folder where, for interviews, and I'm going to look inside that, I've got what, what I've done in the sample file is, is put a, um, a sample, it's called the IO intake interview. I, took a, this, I, I created this very early when we were doing the first online intake ones, and so I, uh, I borrowed the Iowa, uh, an, an, maybe even an early version of the Iowa intake interview, A to J file, so that you could see what it is. And I've already put the XSL file um, in that folder. There's a shared folder, and that contains the avatars, the language files, and a whole bunch of very important files. a to jviewer.php, that is your container file. So remember back in my present, back in my slide, there has to be a page that, that points to a to j, the a to j viewer interview. So it's essentially the container for the flash object. That's what that is. And it's a PHP file, which I'll explain in a second. A to J viewer dot Swift is the A to J viewer itself. Um, component is just sort of like a support file for that. All right. A to J get data and set data are is the um, is the catch program. Um, I'm going to I'm going to I'm not going to talk about set data right now. But A to J get data is the file that sits on your server that catches the data when it gets sent from A to J when the user presses submit. All right, we'll look at that in a second. Actually, that's going to be really important for us. All right, so the only other thing to do to, to get started here is I have to actually start the web service. All right, and in order to start the web service, there's a, XAMPP provides um, a nice little tool, a nice little batch file called uh, one more back, sorry. There it is. Called Apache Start. And all this is is a batch file that, you know, let's see if I can um, edit this. All this is is a batch file that basically runs a runs the program, runs Apache essentially, so that if there's a service for your web server running so that you can start testing it. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to double click on that. So open the little command box and now it says Apache is starting. And you don't want to close this box until you until you're done, you know, testing um, this particular session. So we'll just uh, minimize that. And now if I go to a go to my web browser and I create a new tab and I type 127.0.0.1 which sounds all cryptic, and it is, but 127.0.0.1 is the uh, universal saved number for running a web server locally. So when I hit enter, normally when you would type that in, actually, let's, let's, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to close the web service off. All right, and then I'm going to type 127.1 and press enter. 
And you see, you normally would get this, you know, Google Chrome cannot connect to one. There is no web server at 127.0.1. That's right, I just shut it down, right? And so when I open up the web server, there we go, and then go back to my browser and go to this web page, because every website has a DNS number associated with it, it opens up the default for XAMPP. Now, if I want to get to my server, and I want you to make sure I want to make sure you understand this, right? All of my servers are underneath XAMPP htdocs. htdocs is sort of like C level; it's the base. So, if I were to type um, 127.0.0.1 slash Drupal.cali.org, I would go to that server. If I were to do that with uh, IllinoisHumane.org, I would go to that server. In this case, I want to go to A to J online and see what happens. I'm pretty sure I know what the result of this. Right? And what I get is the, essentially because there's no uh, index.htm file or other file for the web server, the Apache web server, to tell uh, it what to do, I, I get essentially a file directory, right? Now, what I can do is I can navigate this file directory inside my browser and actually go run that container file, right? And that was over in interviews. Uh, no, not interviews. Where was that? It was in shared, and it was a2jviewer.php. That's right. So, uh, you know. Uh, I'm going to pretend I have no further knowledge here and, and make mistakes in front of you and then show you how you fix them because that's actually how you uh, construct your uh, server environment. So I run this and wow, this actually kind of sort of worked, right? It ran a to j viewer.php. Um, it loaded the a to j viewer, as you can see, but then it said, well, it can't find this file interviews.interview.xml. All right, but cool. I mean, the fact that I got some some positive response is a is a, a hopeful sign. All right, so I'm going to open up a Dreamweaver here, and I'm going to go into my um, I'm going to go into that a2jviewer.php file. I have to make sure I'm in the right. This this is the thing that often screws me up. I, I'm working on I'm working on one web page when I'm actually testing another web page. And I've spent a half hour thinking I'm testing the wrong one, and I'm tearing my hair out. And then I look and say, "Oh, I've got the wrong. Um, I'm in the wrong file folder." So if you remember where I was, I was in XAMPP, htdocs, a to j online, and now I'm okay. I'm in that server, shared. I was looking at this. This is the file that I ran to get that error. All right. So this is the container file that basically points to an interview. I'm not going to try to teach you PHP at this point. I'm only going to show you where um, there are some variables that are important for setting this up. So you get a, a, at least a, a broad overview of how, this, uh, how, how all these individual pieces are connected to each other. So here's these four or five important variables. Template URL, file data URL, get data URL, set data URL, exit URL. All right. The one that we're worried about right this moment, we'll do one at a time, is the fact that it can't load the interview. And it looks like it's looking for interviews slash slash interview.xml. That looks like an error, right? And actually, that's caused by the fact that this line is wrong. What we really want that to do is point to that sample interview that I've got in my, uh, in my um, directory tree there. So let's go see what that sample interview should be. A to J online, A to J server interviews. All right, I don't even have an interview.xml file. What I've got is my Iowa intake uh, A to J. So I'm going to actually open that up. All right, just for yucks, I'm going to take a look at uh, this guy. I want to see what what's underneath that exit button. The exit button goes to www.iowalegalaid.org. All right, just wanted to see what that looks like. I'm going to save as, 
into, and, and here I where I want to make sure I'm, I'm careful, example, htdocs, a2j online, a2j server, interviews. Right. I want to save this as interview.xml. All right. I'm going to alt-tab back here. There it is, interview.xml. Now I'm going to go back to my Dreamweaver and make sure that my template URL points to that. So it's interviews, and what I want is that, interview.xml. I hope you see that connection. Here's the name of the interview file. Here's the file, and here's the A to J template that I started with, and I just did a file save as in order to create that, right? So now I go back to my browser, and um, all I have to do is refresh this. And, and I hope an error occurs here because I want to. It will it, it will it will save you a million hours if I can demonstrate this, but I'll explain it anyway. So I press F5, and oh damn, I didn't get an error. Okay, so what what often happens is that you'll get the same error even though you fix the problem. And the problem is that your browser has cached the interview or cached the web page, and it pulls it from the cache instead of going to the website. Right? And so you see the same thing no matter what you do, even though you've changed it a million times. Right? Now in this case, it um, seemed to work. I'm happy about that. I think I might have cleared my browser cache before I started the interview, uh, this presentation, and so we're in good shape. So here I am. Welcome to Iowa Legal Aid. Begin. You know, when you complete this interview, it does not mean blah, blah, blah. Great, it's working. So I've actually got a working A to J interview on a web server that's running on my computer right now. Now, there's a whole bunch of problems still, um, and I'll point them out quickly. So the first one is you can't, you can't tell because maybe you don't spend as much time as I do, but um, this is running an old version of A to J. Actually, this is running A to J 2.0, and that's my fault. The files that are on the a to jauthor.org website for installing on your own server still contain the 2.0 viewer. Um, it's easy enough to fix, and I and I and I might be able to show you how to do that real quick. But I'll explain it real quick. All you have to do is take the same files that are in a to jauthor 4, which you can download and install, and copy them over the files, um, and everything will work. Second problem. So if I want to start testing this interview, you'll notice that I have to, you know, put stuff in like my name and choose that. And then are you in jail? No. And, and here's the problem. Um, I have to go through this entire interview before I get to the last screen where it says submit. And so in order to be able to test the entire round trip, you know, I'm going to be wasting a lot of time going through, you know, a hundred uh, zillion questions. So in order to fix that, I'm going to go back into A to J. I'm going to go to the first step of the first question of step two, which I think is right there. Yeah. So it's a, it says deadline problem, and I'm going to add a button. Um, and I'm going to add a button that basically, um, here, button plus, I'm going to call this my um, get me out of here button. And I'm going to tell the button, I'm going to use one of the predefined button destinations, which is success process form. That's the only button choice that will take the data and send it off to the server. So I want that to happen because I want to test this whole round trip process. We're going to say change, and we're going to hit preview, and there it is. Get me out of here. All right? Cool. So um, another trick that I often do here is I go into um, A to J. I'm going to, I'm going to go to the uh, first item in the interview. You know, the very first uh, question that pops up, and I'm going to put a line, I'm going to add a line into this and just call this uh, test 100, all right? And I'll show you why I do that in a second. Close. Now I want to save that, and that saves that. So now I've got a new interview.xml, and I go back to my browser, 
and here it's pointing to the container file. I'm going to hit F5 to refresh. And oh good, so, so here's the error I got. So remember, I put a line in there that said test 100, right? Where is it? Oops. There it is. See, I put test 100 in. When you complete this interview, it does not mean that I will legal aid. So I go over and I've run it. Welcome. Oh, wait. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I was on the second one. It was just how the uh, map laid it out. Cool. So what that, what that little addition of that line does is it reassures me that the interview that I'm editing is the same as the interview that I'm testing. And it reassures me when I run it that uh, the browser cache didn't get in the way and, and deliver up to me the wrong version of the interview, which happens um, in all sorts of situations. And so, by, so every time I touch the A to J interview while I'm testing, you know, I might increment that number, just uh, another one, you know, hit save, go back here, hit F5, refresh, go to this one, and there's test 101. And that makes sure to me that everything is in sync, right, because I hate wasting time chasing down phantom errors. All right, what's the second thing I want to do here? Well, so I answer yes. I answer, let's do a name like Jonathan. Email. And never been applied. And I'm not in jail. And my zip is 5055. And I don't have any documents. See, already I'm, I'm getting uh, bored doing this and tired. I don't have any criminal charges, no track of ticket. My age is 50, but it's not the age, it's the mileage. I am not disabled, and now I'm ready to get out of here. Ah, and there's my get me out of here button. So I don't have to go through the whole rest of the interview to see if my round trip will work. I'm going to click get me out of here. And what happened there was A2J sends the ANX file, the XML, to the server, and there should be a there should be a, a program or a file or a web page to catch this data and do something with it. And the good news is, I got I got this saving data, and I got a thanks for the data. Normally, the script would send the data to Hot Docs, so the catch worked, all right. And then um, I, I put some other things in the sample catch file, like you know, show the data that gets that shows up. And here, here it is. This is actually the data that got sent. And if you, it, it, it all shows up on one giant long line, unfortunately. But we can at least sort of like scroll a little bit. Oh, okay, mail. So it knows it got that data correct. Uh, user first name, and there's Jonathan. So good. So the data is getting from the A to J interview. To back to the server, it is getting caught, and uh, that much is working. Now the next thing that's happening is I'm getting a bunch of errors, and these are PHP errors. Um, and it even and the good news is it's telling me where the error is. A to J set data that PHP. That's my catch file, and it's on line 59. So let's go take a look at that. Because what I want to accomplish for you is I is I want to run an entire interview simulation where I finish an interview, send it off, and then the and then an XML transform happens. So let's go find A to J set data. Wait, was it set data? Oh, it has a bad memory. Yes, A to J set data. Uh, was it this one? No, that's the old one. Okay, so I'm in Hot Docs, A2J Online, A2J Server, there's my set data. Let's open that in Dreamweaver. And here's where I could spend another hour talking about PHP, and, and actually not just PHP, but X, simple XML, which is the XML library within PHP. And instead, I'm just going to go really quickly through it. So 
it initializes the session, it grabs the XML file from the, from the data stream that's coming back, it sticks it into a session variable called $XML, all right? There's your thanks for the data. We saw that, that was good. It echoed it back to the screen, which is good, we saw that. And then here's where the actual XSL transform takes place, right? The, a new transform processor is created by PHP, um, and then it does a bunch of magic hand waving stuff that I'm not going to explain because um, you can you can you know look up the docs for yourselves. But basically, it loads the interview data, loads the transform. Here it is: Iowa intake to lsxml.xslt, and then generates a uh, a string and a file results.txt. You know, and then uh, tries to um, and then tries to show some of that. So if you remember, I had an error at 59. A to J set data, PHP on line 59, it's saying um, failed to load external entity. Okay, a file is missing, basically. Uh, line 59, load interviews, Iowa intake, Iowa intake to lsxml.xlt. Okay, what's wrong here is it's looking for this file and it can't find it. And I know the reason why, because I did this before I started the presentation, is, is I have an error in the uh, folder names. There is no Iowa intake folder. I put Iowa intake to lsxml.xslt inside the interviews folder. So I'm just going to delete that, get rid of the extra slash. I'm going to make sure I've got that right by looking at it. Yes, I'm going to go back to my folder and look. Is it there? Yes. It says Iowa intake to lsxml.xsl. Ah, that's wrong, right? So I can either change the name of this to xsl.xslt, but I'll just go to Dreamweaver and get rid of that extra T, right? So this type of stuff about like, you know, not being in the wrong folder, finding the wrong file name happens all the time. It is the thing that is most frustrating and causes the most confusion when people uh, call and ask me for my help. And I wanted to sort of, I wanted you to experience it live with me so that you could see that. So I've just saved that. All right, I'm gonna go back here. I've got to back into the interview in order to test this. All right, and here, remember, I'm testing, so I have to go back through my interview all over again. Oh, let me, let me show you one real quick thing. Remember how in the interview, when you hit the exit button, it goes off to iowa.legalaid? Yeah, let's do that just to show that. And there, it works. Cool. So that's a situation where the, the exit URL, yeah, I need to look at this one. And let's look at the exit button. The exit URL is an exit user does not qualify, or you could save a, uh, there, there are, we have other types of exits, if you remember. Yeah, and that goes off to the Iowa Legal Aid. All right. So there might be situations where you want the user to exit off to a particular page, like if they say, yes, I'm disabled, and for some reason or another you can't help them on this online form, then you might send them to the page that shows where they can um, make a call to get accommodation for their uh, disability. Or if they say, yes, I'm in prison, you could send them off to a page that basically says, here's what we can do for you if you're currently incarcerated that we can't do otherwise, or something like that. All right. So what did I do? So I fixed that error for the XSL transform. I hit begin. I have to uh, answer the questions again. I'm, and so now I'm going to get impatient and just like, you know, throw crap in there. not in jail. Um, after I did this, like after you do this four or five dozen times, you, you tend to move the button up even closer, you know, so that you don't have to spend any time. Eventually, though, you do, I, I do end up running through the entire interview because I want to make sure that the data that was put into every single box showed up in the transform. You know, so I can't avoid the uh, pain entirely, but I can at least uh, minimize it. No document. Need help with traffic tickets? No. And my age now? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deliberately choose a different number because uh, of that problem of when I'm looking at files. I don't want to be looking at a file and see the same number and say, is this the right file or is, is this the new one? And so whenever I do a test, I, um, actually what I should do is 
Like my rule is to just increment. So now I'm working on test 51 or, or something like that. This is similar to that test 101 thing that I did before. Small trick saves me a lot of time. Are right, you disabled? Do any of these apply? Get me out of here. So here I'm going to exit. Hopefully the PHP problem has been solved. It has. Let's blow this up a little bit. So the PHP script, I told it that I wanted to do the transform and show it back to me. And that's what it's done. So this is the XML file that is the result of the transform of the ANX file, which is entirely contained right here, this long line. So this long line got turned into this uh, longer line, I should say, as a result of being run through the XSL transform um, using PHP's uh, simple XML. Now, it also, just for yucks, I told it to save it as a file. Thought I did at least. Yeah, I told it to save it as a file. Let me show you what I mean. Yeah, here I said after the transform, uh, dr dump it to a file, results.txt. And so this is just going to this is going to do whatever it is that I've just displayed up there and put it into a, a file that I can open up in Notepad. So I open this up in uh, Notepad. There's my results.txt, and there it is. Now that's insanely hard to read. So what I'm going to do is close that. I'm just going to re I'm going to change the name of that to results.xml. Yes, that's what I want to do. I'm going to double click on it. And it should open in either Firefox or IE. Looks like it's going to be IE. Yes, it is. And because it's an XML file, Firefox and uh, or IE will display it in a nice outlined format. And you'll see there's my SDF for the name because I got tired. There's that zip code I stuck in there. There's my mail age 51 that I stuck in there. You know, and so the file, the data that I entered in the A to J guided interview did get sent to the server, did get transformed, and did get uh, turned into, you know, this is an LS XML format. Whew. So that's, wow, that's exactly noon. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Um, that's A to J on your server. I also wanted to say that um, uh, unbeknownst to you, during this time, I'm actually not this happy guy. It's actually Halloween, and I'm a zombie. Um, so um, happy Halloween, and if you have any questions, I guess uh, um, you can either send me an email, or if you want to try to ask me a question right now, um, Dina, do you want to open up the line? Yeah, we actually had a question come in um, just a minute ago while you were talking. So... Um, Brian is actually running, he said that he's running um, the server files on Linux and things that are working well so far. And his question is, he said he noticed that you deleted the interview ID from the directory path in the a to j viewer.php. Yep. And the getdata.php file. He says he's running it on a Linux server and he's left the interview ID in the directory path and it seems to be working. So he's wondering, is that interview ID just for hosting multiple interviews where you might need to switch between them depending on what the user selects? Oh man, Brian, smart. <laughs> that is exactly what it's there for. So, so if you wanted to send people to a different interview, you know, you had multiple .a to j interviews, um, but you wanted to use the same um, um, a to j interview .php file, you know, you could you could send the name of the interview as a variable, and then just have that variable, you know, change which interview gets open. Right? Uh, L LHI doesn't have um, um, you know 900 copies of a to j. They've got one copy. And um, and they, and they don't and they generate the container file, you know, on the fly, including filling in the variable name, the interview name, as a variable. So yes, that's exactly correct, Brian. And I I, I just I didn't I didn't do that for the for purposes of this demonstration because I just wanted to uh, keep things simple. <laughs> so if we have um, 
Any other questions, you guys are welcome. Raise your hand and I'll unmute you if you have a question, or you are welcome to put your questions in the question box and we'll um, go through these and do our best to stump John on something here. All right, now, now that was, it's really hard to do this by watching somebody else do it. I, I'm sure it helps, but it's, but the real, but the real insights come from you sort of, um, what's the word, getting comfortable with your own file system and where things are. Um, as you can see, there's, there's a, 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 a ton of detail, a ton of little simple details. And, and what's worse, I, I'm, I'm sympathizing with you here, what's worse is that it's not like if you're not a webmaster, you don't spend all day doing this. You know, you just want to do this once to set up this, you know, online intake interview or this uh, other interview, and then you sort of want to forget about it and, and let it just work forever. Um, and so that makes it especially hard for those of you who are having to come up to speed on this and be sort of like temporary webmasters. So let me say, if you have problems, I'll be happy to help out in, in any way I can. Um, it, it just realize that it, that because it's your environment, it doesn't mean I understand how you're doing it or how to fix it. You know, um, I'm familiar with my environment and familiar with how these environments work, and I'll do the best I can, but it's, it's easiest if you can sort of like actually get hands on the machine or at least hands on a console and see where and how everything is to make sure all the file names and stuff are uh, kosher. All right, good luck. So we have one more question before we go from um, Brian here. He says, aside from the 2.0 A to J files for the download rather than 4.0, are there any other important discrepancies with the online instructions, um, which otherwise seem to work fine for him so far? I'll bet there are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, it, uh, I haven't looked closely at this file in a few years, and so it's time to do that. Um, so I'll, I'll get to that um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, and this isn't intended to be sort of a, a production system that you can download. It's intended to be sort of a proof of concept. You know, you need to make sure that what, what I've done works for you, you know, in a robust, in a robust manner. Um, so as much as, I mean, we, I've, I've tested this and played around with this a lot, a lot so I think everything is there. Um, you know, but happy to get any feedback if I'm wrong. Okay, so um, are there any other questions that we have here before we wrap things up? I am actually going to, let's just um, quickly, I'm going to take this back from you, John. All right. Um, and let's just show you guys uh, what's coming next month, or not next month, actually in two months from now. Um, so like I said, today was part four of the series, and actually I want to thank John so much for doing such a great job of breaking down something that I know can be very challenging um, in the part of your online intake process. So thank you for joining us today. John actually has been on all of our, of our past calls and tends to join. Um, so if you ever have any questions on our next call, if he's around, then you please, if you, you know, come back and you have questions after you've thought about this, don't be afraid to ask. But the next training call will be December 15th. I know that's getting close to your holiday vacation times, but we're going to try to squeeze it in before the end of the year. Um, and we actually switched it. So let me go back to the home page here. The final one will be um, part five up and running. Where does the information go and what happens next? And this is going to be a session where we talk a little bit more about um, policies and the process of what happens once you get your interviews up and running, as John just showed you today, and you start to get some applicants coming in through your online intake system. And we hope to have the Legal Services Corporation, some representatives from there, speak to you guys. I know lots of programs are funded by um, LSC for doing online intake through the TIG grants. So they're going to speak a little bit about their policies on that call as well. So if any last questions, we will take them now. Otherwise, thank you all for joining us today, and we hope to hear from you in a couple months. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dina.